the rainbow, there's I'm at the home studio of artist Terry Border, internationally known for his bent objects. Terry? Eric, those Cheetos were for art. I should have known better. Because if anyone can put snack food to better uses than face stuffing, it's Greenwood, Indiana's Terry Border. It's turned into basically making uh, everyday objects that we all know into little characters and telling their stories. Terry is sort of a mad scientist, bringing life to these inanimate objects. <laughs> you know, we all have uh, these ideas about uh, objects and what they mean to us, and I try to have fun. I try to make people laugh. Some people get them right away, like poor Rosemary, absolutely crushed when her boyfriend Basil hit the road. It just takes a second for people to get on my weird wavelength. When you're walking down a store aisle and you see an object and it's like, ding, you know, you get an idea, that's the most fun for me. So I can see broccoli 10 times but that one day something I'll see broccoli at a certain angle or whatever and it'll an idea popping you know pop, pop in my head and you'll say why didn't I think of that before sometimes I'll be doing something like this is just too weird I got one of an egg and it's uh, he's visiting his mother it's supposed to be maybe Mother's Day and he's got a card that says mother in his hand in the background, you can see he's too late. It's a rotisserie chicken. And people loved it. People were like, this is hilarious. And then some people were like, oh, that's really sad. But it's really funny, too. For me, the dark stuff is the funniest. One time at a, uh, a book signing, a couple of little cute little kids, probably seven and nine, came up, brother and sister, and they were looking through my book. And then they come to uh, one photograph of a bunch of little figures made out of uh, tubes of Preparation H. And they're pulling straws to figure out who's going to be the one to this job coming up. <laughs> and, and they turn around to mom, you know, what is this about, mom? And I'm like, <laughs> I know, well, that book is not going to get sold. That sale is gone. And she looks at it and she looks at me and she, and she just leads them away. <laughs> you know? but it wasn't always this way for Terry. When he first started taking pictures, he was working with objects. But no matter how much he wanted, he never got to bend them. And I was a commercial photographer and a commercial photographer's assistant for many years, which means photographing uh, ironing boards and uh, drugstore uh, items and televisions and caskets. And I hated every minute of it. I couldn't even pick the angle most of the time. So what's a man to do who is hell-bent on bending things? I took a job in a grocery store as a baker and I'd always pass the lemon rack and they'd have these big bushel baskets full of lemons and right next to the real lemons, they had bushel baskets full of the fake lemons, you know, the lemon juice in the plastic lemons. So if a lemon was alive, if it was a character and if it was uh, kind of like us, how would that relate to him? Today, Terry's bent objects have populated a world of their own. From international recognition in various publications to calendars and book deals in the U.S., Terry has achieved what many artists dream of, to do what he wants, how he wants, with his creations. And it's nothing I planned. I'm not smart enough that I could have planned that if I tried, it's just kind of happened. It kind of morphed into this thing that we call bit objects. Today, it's a piece inspired by a character from a popular cereal commercial. I think so. We're going to try to find the star, the star breakfast biscuit. What would happen if one of these cereal biscuits were to see the aftermath of breakfast? It, yeah, well, like you said, the Valhalla, do they have, do the cereal have an afterlife? You know, do they, do they have a cereal religion? <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. 
And if you happen to be out and about, it is possible you might find a Terry Border bent object somewhere. On occasion, Terry will leave behind one of his characters. Whether it's a gas station or I'll just drop it off at a mall or uh, some uh, park, uh, city streets, a lot of times I'll you know, put them on, on windowsills of city streets. I have yet to hear from anybody that have found one. I don't really have to know what goes on. Probably, probably nine times out of 10, a janitor or somebody will pick it up and throw it away. 